Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. Jim, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's a pleasure being on. All right. Now, the first main topic I'd like to discuss today is one you and I have discussed before. But if you can just give us an update on this, the basically um, the petrodollar and also China's role in kind of demantling the dollar. What is your perspective on the, you know, um, we just recently saw a couple weeks ago the petro yuan be announced, the oil futures contract denominated in yuan China announced. Can you give us an update on this? Okay, I don't know if it's an update or, or a summary. Uh, not necessarily incidents in the last week or so, but in, in the last few months, <clears throat> we've had some extremely important developments and I can safely say in, in my own mind that the, the gold oil RMB contracts, there are two of them, in Shanghai, the launch of them together is the most important financial event in a generation. I believe what it does is it gives the death knell to the petrodollar for its monopoly basis. No longer is it monopoly. No longer will all nations say, well, if we're buying oil, we must use treasury bills and dollars. That's not the case anymore. It's not going to be how it works. Not anymore. <clears throat> the second thing I think is, is a very important single event. And the Saudis know it's inevitable. But the Chinese are going to demand that the Saudis sell oil in RMB terms. And uh, I regard that as a knife in the heart of the petrodollar. <clears throat> hey, Jim, a question about that. If, if they're selling oil in RMB terms, what are they going to be doing with the proceeds? What do you think? What will the Saudis do? Yeah, like, for instance, I mean, there's not a huge uh, bond market in RMB at the moment. So wh where will the proceeds funnel towards? Um, I, I think the Saudis will take RMB and already there's rather plentiful investment, business investment, the petrol petrochemical complexes are always being upgraded. Uh, there's exploration going on. So the Saudis can use RMB for developing their economy. The Vision 2030 that Prince MBS, uh, Mohammed bin Salman has, that requires tremendous investment. I think it's going to be in RMB. Can you expand on why you think that China will demand that Saudi, the Saudis sell oil in RMB? Pride. Uh, the Chinese are, I think, the Saudis' biggest client. Uh, the United States is not in the room when the Chinese buy Saudi oil. So the Chinese say, why should we use the Americans' currency? Uh, the Chinese want their place in global finance. They want control of their own fate without using a country's currency where they're printing the money to fill their Wall Street banks and covering the U.S. government debt. This is the end time for the dollar's dominance. 
<clears throat> well, speaking of the dollar today, it looked like there was a little bit of strength. We've got a lot of people out there who are, um, I, you know, there's a lot of traders out there I see, especially on Twitter and financial sector of Twitter, who are thinking that there'll be a dollar, uh, you know, rebound here coming up shortly. Um, what are your thoughts on that, maybe in the medium term? <sighs> Honestly, I, I I don't pay a great deal of attention. I know this might sound like heresy, but I don't don't pay a lot of attention to the short term moves in either gold or the dollar. I'm I'm busy following the events that will force the collapse of the dollar mm -hmm. and events that will bring about the breakdown of the Comex. So, I. Well, the the dollar is making its its movements right now, and honestly, I'm I'm not too concerned about about that. I, I what I'm following is the trade war, the, the tariffs back and forth, mm -hmm. uh, sorghum versus the uh, ZTE chips for China. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that the dollar is moving a little bit doesn't interest me at all. Mm -hmm. I I don't mean to be rude, but. Uh, that's if so there are problem. 10 stories out there, and that's one of them, that's 10th on my list. Well, what about this? I mean, uh, uh, along the other counter argument, if I'm going to play devil's advocate about the RMB, is if you just look at their M2 money supply in China, it's, it, there's never been a country that's exploded their M2 money supply this fast, uh, you know, in percentage terms. So, you know, I'm sure people look at that and, and they're afraid of being, you know, and the, uh, eventually there'll be a devaluation in the RMB. I mean, how long can they prop up this peg that they have versus the U.S. dollar? I mean, I, I essentially see that they both kind of want to devalue the respective currencies. So I guess the question is, you know, from one fiat or the other, I mean, they're all pretty poor choices when you look at them fundamentally, I guess. Right. That's why I don't pay a lot of attention to the yuan movement either. Yeah. I look at the, the factors that are going to wreck the U.S. government treasury bond market and the factors that are going to wreck the gold market and the factors that are wrecking the petro dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, as for the yuan, there's a lot of misconception out there. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people tend to think that the, the yuan is in trouble, the RMB. Mm -hmm. uh, how could it be in a lot of trouble when almost all, like 98% of their debt is held internally? Mm -hmm. With the United States, we've got, oh, I don't know, maybe 40% of the $21 trillion that's held in foreign hands. Mm -hmm. So why aren't people talking about that more? They're talking about the wrong thing. Uh, the Chinese might be seeing their currency rise slowly on anticipation of a great deal of volume in the Shanghai oil market. Also in anticipation of maybe a year from now, some form of a connection and linkage between the Chinese currency and gold. Mm -hmm. Now I say some linkage, I'm not saying a gold back you on, I'm saying some form of linkage and it might be the gold trade note. It could be that the yuan will be interchangeable. Short-term yuan bonds uh, might be interchangeable with the gold trade note for a period of time. I call the yuan a caretaker uh, currency for that purpose. Uh, anyone who thinks the yuan is, is tremendously overvalued, I think, is very lost. Mm -hmm. the, the overvalued currency is the dollar. And we're printing it. Usually when a nation prints a currency to cover their debt, they suffer a 50% currency decline. Why have, why has the dollar not? <clears throat> now, one of the topics I would like you to uh, address in a little bit more detail is the potential trade war between the U.S. and China. You mentioned it, and I'm wondering, does it have anything to do does it also tie into this kind of de-dollarization or china moving away from the dollar is are those two related i mean i see it could be kind of interpreted as china just kind of moving away from the united states 
The Chinese have been moving away from the United States financial system for the last two years. Uh, the whole establishment of the Belt and Road Initiative, get this, is a roughly $8 trillion table of projects. None of it's in the dollar. And the United States corporations have been, uh, oh, they, they left the side door open so a couple companies like Honeywell and General Electric can slip in and maybe grab uh, some floor scraps. If they get more than, uh, oh, how should I say, if they get more than, say, $20 billion out of $8 trillion, I'll be surprised. Hey, Jim, this week uh, I saw the um, Russian stock market went down a lot because of the sanctions. Supposedly, that was a big reason why it got hit. And, um, you know, recently you've seen a lot of pictures around the Internet of uh, Russian gold reserves, Russian even silver reserves. You can see in the pictures that they have. Um, I know you've written a little bit about the Russian ruble and, you know, potentially there being some type of linkage to bullion. Uh, and and, and I'm, get, I'm gathering that you know that it's the most gold-backed of any fiat currency currently as far as official reserves um, you know, that, that's out there in the world. So what, what's going on in that front if, if you have any news? I, I really don't follow the Russian stock market much. I, I follow the various factors that will bring about the Russian dominance in the oil market, which will wreck the petrodollar. Um, I know that the Russian ruble has fallen somewhat, but anytime Russia wants, they can bring about a 200% lift in their currency just by backing their currency with gold. I know that sounds like a flip, simple comment. There are a lot of intricacies, there are a lot of complexities, and I, I don't have all the information on that. Mm -hmm. But Russia has probably on the order of 30,000, 35,000 tons of gold. That's not the leader. Uh, the Chinese have at least that, maybe twice. The Chinese have 5,000 years of history where they were accumulating gold uh, in the time of Christ. The Chinese have a lot of gold. It's not just their official gold. Their official gold is their central bank and their SAFE, Sovereign Wealth Fund. But they've also got the Chinese elders. They have various groups, uh, the White Dragon Society, the Red Dragons, uh, uh, the, the White Dragon family. <clears throat> These are very ancient families that are just loaded with gold. And I think they were involved 100 years ago in some of the issues with the United States, and that's why the U.S. is battling some old legacy treasury bonds with China, because they don't want to honor them. The United States doesn't honor past treaties. We, we're the exceptional nation. So I, I take it from those data points. I mean, you don't subscribe to the idea that there's 190,000 tons of gold in the world. You think there's probably more? Oh, there's a lot more. The Chinese have probably close to 190,000 tons of gold. Wow. Just the Chinese. Wow. If I had to take a guess, I'd say the White Dragons have about 110 or 120,000 tons of gold. Now, I think we have time for one or two viewers' questions. This viewer is wanting to know, what is your perspective on information regarding gold and silver-backed cryptocurrencies? I think there are going to be a couple of important purposes. Uh, obviously, the backing of, of an individual currency could be fortified. Like, like, for instance, the Russians. The Russians might back uh, a, a good deal of their rubles with gold put forth. I mean, they, they might, for instance, they might say, we're going to put up 500 tons and see how this goes. But that brings up some very big questions. Where is it going to be stored? Who's the custodian? And where will financial audits be done? Okay, custodian role and audit role. Very big points. Um, I think 
the Russians would get around that. So I don't mean to sidestep it and defraud that point. I think they will solve that legitimately. But there's another rule that I think is coming for the gold-backed cryptos. I don't call them cryptocurrencies. I, I call them crypto money. Uh, that's a term used within my, my group of colleagues because the crypto money is going to produce a great deal of damage, I think, for the cryptocurrencies. But the cryptocurrencies might still thrive. I think they're just going to take some very serious blows. Um, we might possibly see the crypto money, go back cryptos. We might possibly see that in, for instance, the gold trade note, where China might purchase, uh, you know, a, a substantial amount of oil, and might prefer container vessels to have shipments and payments in gold trade notes paid in cryptos to facilitate all the customs and port facility paperwork, put that on the blockchain. Uh, already we, we have a, a South Korean uh, shipping company that's going to be doing that and, and alleviating some of their procedures and reducing some of their costs. So this is where you're likely to see some crypto activity in shipping. Okay, well, cryptocurrency or crypto money, if gold-backed, might find a real avenue there. I think the Russians are going to be involved in that. They, they might, for instance, I'm just going to throw this out. If it's not oil and gas that they put a, a Russian ruble crypto together with, they might do it for agricultural sales. They're becoming quickly the number one agricultural exporter in the world. Hey, um, Jim, I, I just have a question. Let's say, you know, you, I think a recent interview I heard, you, you know, you're talking about something personally. You, I think someone in your family passed and you're inheriting some money. Say, you know, say you inherited right now $100,000 in cash in U.S. dollars. What would you do with that money? How would you allocate it? Oh, my gosh. Tough, tough question. I think I would. Well, let's assume that I have a very plentiful cash situation. OK, uh -huh. so I've got that amount of money. I'll think in percentage terms and I'll assume that it's all to be invested. I think I'd put 60 to 70 percent of it in silver bars, mm -hmm. the big thousand ounce bars. I mean, I, I wouldn't mess around with the 100-year-old Morgan silver dollars. I'd go to the, you know, the big bullion items, mm -hmm. you know, 10 kilo and 1,000 ounce bars of silver, mm -hmm. 60, 70 percent, uh, 10 or 20 percent I'd, I'd put in gold. Mm -hmm. And as for the rest, I think I'd put it split between the Chinese currency and the Russian currency hmm. because they're going gold backed. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of time. They want the U.S. debt situation to collapse on its own merits before they launch a gold currency in Russia and China. It is that simple. Hmm. Thank you. All right. Well, Jim Lee, thank you so much for joining us today. Before we let you go, did you want to share with the viewers any last thoughts you had and where our viewers can find you online? Oh, I think we covered uh, quite a few topics there. I, I think people need to uh, get wind of the Eurasian trade zone that's coming into view. Uh, it's going to be a rather substantial trade zone, and it's going to go completely counter to the George Orwell concept of uh, Eurasia losing out to Oceania. Uh, U.S. and Britain are Oceania. They've had their day, and now they've given up their industry, and they're loaded down with debt. Okay. Uh, the Eurasian trade zone is going to be the big baby operated and formed by Russia and China. Uh, they've got the Belt and Road Initiative, eight trillion projects. Almost none of that will be in the dollar. Uh, the Eurasian trade zone is hardly ever mentioned 
in the U.S. press, but railways are being connected through the old Soviet republics that are heading toward Europe. They're going to be supply lines. They're going to be coal, aluminum, iron ore, a lot of different things. They have to solve certain problems like, you know, uniform track size and gauge, but that's not going to be difficult to overcome if they're going to be building new track. The Eurasian trade zone is going to be an, an absolute slam against the dollar, and whatever damage is done by Shanghai uh, and the Chinese Arab oil trade, it's not going to be just Saudis. Whatever the Saudis do, like in accepting RMB for for Chinese oil sales, so will Kuwait, so will Qatar is already selling energy products to China in RMB. So it's going to be the Arabs lining up with China, China, and the Chinese are going to have the, the, the petrodollar uh, death knell continue to ring with the gold oil RMB contracts. These are not items of extreme importance in the U.S. and Western press. People need to really get, get up to speed on that, and a good way to do that is to sign up for the hat trick letter. I cover it every time, every month, every month without exception. I got something on the Eurasian trade zone. I got something on the, the petrodollar fading away or being undermined or being surrounded or being attacked. Um, I, I, I like the phrase very much that the Chinese – Contracts are the death knell for the petrodollar, and the Chinese Arab, in particular Saudi oil sales and RMB, is going to be a dagger in the petrodollar's heart. It's going to bring about a lot less in dollar volume in global trade. It's going to bring about a gradual acceleration in non-dollar global trade payments, and as a result, less in the way of bank reserves in U.S. treasuries. There's a reason why these countries are dumping treasuries. They don't see that the U.S. is ever going to honor the debt. We've gone out of control. Anyway, www.goldenjackass.com is the website. Um, every month is a, a new report. It's a labor of love. I've been at this now for 169 months which is probably 50 or 80 more months than I thought it would last. So having a good time, it's, it's difficult work at times. I cannot afford big errors. Uh, I will boast and say that of the forecasts that I have out there, at least 80% have come to pass. Some of them are still in progress, like, for instance, Germany flipping east. They've had enough of the Russian sanctions that the United States put on through their uh, Brussels office at the EU Commission. Now, th this is, we're seeing the end of the global dominance by the United States, both financially and economically, not to mention militarily. It's going to be exciting and it's going to be long and drawn out, but uh, kind of like declaring bankruptcy and, and going into bankruptcy. The insolvency catches up to the, the firm, and th there's damage, and then it, it happens slowly, and then all of a sudden it happens quickly. That's what I think is going to happen with the, the petrodollar. Uh, we, we might have a couple of years still with the petrodollar you know, commanding 70% of, of oil sales, 80% of oil sales, after the Chinese get their, their act uh, all together with some momentum. But I think it's going to chip away. And, and then, then comes the, the, the deadly blow where the Russians and Chinese announce their gold-backed currencies. It won't be gold-backed currency per se. It'll be formal trade payment in gold terms with various devices such as the gold trade note, which will compete with the Treasury bill. This is very exciting. Um, that's why I called the uh, the Shanghai futures contracts the, the biggest financial event in a generation. And it's the biggest financial event since the United States broke the 
Bretton Woods Gold Standard in 71, and the biggest event since 73 when the petrodollar was established. 